I've been reading a play by Euripides, I think it's called Ion, and there's a there's a exchange, a part of a dialogue that just gets at human nature. The the premise of the plot is there's this character called Ion who's an orphan who looks after a temple, I think it's the temple of Apollo in the morning and wakes up, cleans it, sweeps it, uh, talks to people as they come to worship or, or talk to the oracle or the god or however that plays out. And on this particular day, a couple shows up that haven't been able to have children. Uh, the Zuthus is the husband. He comes out of the temple and, and there's a there's a dialogue between him and Ion because Zuthus has been told that the first person he meets, that's going to be his son. And there's this comical interaction between the two where this guy comes out of the temple and tells this relative stranger, oh, you're my family now and, and I'm rich and we're going to look after you. Um, and the guy thinks he's like drunk or off his rocker and, and that section's hilarious. But as it closes, there's, there's a, a dialogue that I think really sums up human nature where maybe we have these these noble beliefs and then maybe we take the easy route out but I thought it was great and maybe worth your time of sharing it. It starts off with with Ion going, ah mother dear shall I ever see thee too? Now more than ever I do long to gaze upon thee whoever thou art but thou perhaps art dead and I shall never have the chance. Chorus goes, we share the good luck of thy house but still I could have wished my mistress too. The Erythraeus line had been blessed with children. Zuthus goes, My son, albeit the god hath for thy discovery brought his oracle to a true issue, and united thee with to me, while thou too hast found what most thou desire. Till now unconscious of it, still, touching is this anxiety so proper in thee, I feel an equal yearning that thou, my child, mayest find thy mother, and I, the wife that bear thee unto me. Maybe we shall discover this, if we leave it to time. But now leave the courts of the god and this homeless life of thine, and come to Athens in accordance with thy father's wishes. For there his happy realm and boteous wealth await thee. Nor shall thou be taunted with base origin and poverty to boot, because in one of these respects thou something lackest, but thou shalt be renowned alike for birth and wealth. Art silent? Why dost thou fix thy eyes on the ground? Thou art lost in thought, and by this sudden change from thy former cheerfulness, thou strikest thy father with dismay. Ion. Things assume a different form, according as we see them before us, or far off. I am glad at what has happened, since I have found in thee a father. But hear me on this point, which I am now deciding. Athens, I am told, that glorious city of a native race owns no aliens, in which case I shall force my entrance there upon a twofold disadvantage, as an alien son and base born as I am, branded with this reproach, while as yet I am unsupported. Shall I get the name of a mere nobody, a son of nobodies? And if I win my way to the highest place in the state and seek to be someone, I shall be hated by those who have no influence, for superiority is galling, while amongst men of worth who could show their wisdom, but are silent, and take no interest in politics, I shall incur ridicule and be thought a fool for not keeping quiet in such a fault-finding city. Again, if I win a name among the men of mark who are engaged in politics, still more I will jealous votes bar my progress, for thus, Father, does it ever want to be. They who have the city's ear and have already made their mark are most bitter against all rivals. Again, if I am a stranger, come to a home that knows me not, and to that childish, childless wife who before had thee as a partner in her sorrow, but now will feel the bitterness of having to bear her fortune all alone. How, I ask, shall I not fairly earn her hatred when I take my stand beside thee? While she still childless sees thy dear pledge with bitter eyes, and then thou hast to choose between deserting me and regarding her, or honouring me and utterly confounding thy home. How many a murderer and death by deadly drugs have wives devised for husbands, 
Besides, I pity that wife of thine, father, with her childless old age beginning. She little deserves to pine in barrenness, a daughter to a noble race. That princely state we found fondly praise is pleasant to the eye, but yet in its mansions sorrow lurk. For who is happy or by fortune blessed that has to live his life in fear of violence with many a sidelong glance? Rather would I live among the common folk and taste their bliss than be a tyrant who delights in making evil men his friends and hates the good in terror of his life. Perchance thou wilt tell me, gold outweighs all evils and wealth is sweet. I have no wish to be abused for holding tightly to my pelf. It's a word, believe it or not. Pelf. Look it up. Nor yet to have the trouble of it. Be mine, a moderate fortune, free from annoyance. Now hear the blessings, Father, that here are mine. First leisure, man's chiefest joy, with but moderate trouble. No villain hath ever drove me from my path, and that is a grievance hard to bear, to make room and give way to sorry knaves. My duty was to pray unto the gods, or with mortal men converse, a minister to their joys, not to their sorrows, and I was ever dismissing one batch of guests while another took their place, so that I was always welcome from the charm of novelty. That honestly, that honesty which men must pray for, ever against their will, custom and nature did conspire to plant in me in the sight of Phobius. Now, when I think on this, I deem that I am better here than their father, so let me live on here, for tis an equal charm to joy in high estate, or in humble fortune find a pleasure. Pretty good argument. Chorus goes. Well said. If only those I love find happiness in thy statement of the case. Then Zuthus goes at it. Cease such idle talk and learn to be happy, for on that spot where I discover thee, my son, I will begin the rites, since I have chanced on the general banquet open to all comers, and I will offer thy birth sacrifice, which aforetime I left undone. Thy birth, uh, And now I will bring thee to the banquet as my guest, and rejoice my heart, and take thee to, to the Athenian land as a visitor forsooth, not as my own son, for I will not grieve my wife in her childish sorrow, but my good fortune. But in time I will seize a happy moment and prevail on her to let thee wield my scepter scepter, or the realm. Thy name shall be Ion, in accordance with what happened. For that thou wert the first to cross my path as I came forth from Apollo's sanctuary. Go gather every friend thou hast, and with them make merry, or the flesh of the sacrifice, on the eve of thy departure from the town of Delphi. On you, ye handmaids, silence, I enjoin thee, for if ye say one word to my wife, death awaits you. And he leaves. He walks off. Mic drop. And then Ion goes, Well, I will go. One thing my fortune lacks, for if I find not her that gave me birth, life is not life to me, my father, and I will make the prayer. O oh, may the, that mother be a daughter of Athens, that from her I may freedom speech, for if a stranger settle in a city free from aliens, e'en though in name he be a citizen, Yet doth he find himself tongue-tied and debarred from the open utterance. And he leaves. To me, I don't think Zuthus answered the big, long, quality argument about the blissful life at the temple. He just kind of paid him off and said, come be happy. Maybe I misread it, but there's something about human character in that exchange.